Oh my gosh, I'm gone. I'm putting on sunscreen and my freaking thing is gone. Oh my gosh. You gotta take care of your skin, guys, but holy cow. The look away, to say the least. Let's see what this is. Oh, hello there, Mr. Walleye. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. It's a freaking eater-sized walleye. Just bit on a worm and a jig and a bobber. Unbelievable. Holy cow. Look at how puffed out he is. He's all upset because <laughs> he knows he got caught. Look at that fish, you guys. That is a perfect eater-sized walleye. Well, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Look at that. Welcome back everybody. Fish Brain Shane here. Good to have you back with me. Um, this episode is pretty special to me because I'm going to do a catch and cook. I'm going to leave out the cleaning. I'm guessing you guys know how to clean some fish. Sometimes I will obviously do the cleaning for you, but this one's going to be a catch and cook. Uh, we'll catch some walleyes for you and uh, cook them up beer batter style. And I'm going to show you my recipe and how I do uh, beer battered walleye and one of the most important things is that it comes out nice and crispy and it doesn't come out soggy you know how sometimes you do beer batter and it's a little soggy in the middle um, i'm going to show you how to do it so that does not happen so stick around for the entire episode i'm super glad to have you here i kind of have a good camera angle for that guy pretty big pretty big deer over there we call him the paddle buck why don't you bring the music? There you go. Let's go fishing, let's go fishing, let's go fishing now. Oh, there you go, Mike. Nice fish. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get you the, uh, let's get the old net jabber out for you here. Yeah, nice walleye, man. Oh, very nice walleye, Mike. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish, and it came, Ooh. oh no, the nice thing is, there you go. Perfect. Yes. Lovely. Nice fish, Mike. Yeah. That's a great one. And look at this beautiful walleye. What a great eater size walleye. Probably about a 17, yeah. 18 inch fish. Yeah. Just a beautiful fish. Oh boy. Nice man. Oh man. The look away got me on that one and that's a nice fish. This is a decent sized fish right here. I'm gonna play this one out well. Oh, that's a good eye. Yeah. That's a good eye. Yeah. Nice fish. Oh, All perfect. right. Nice Beautiful fish. eater walleye. There we go. Thanks for the net job, Mikey. Oh my gosh. What a nice fish, you guys. Look at him. Wow. Man, just a beauty of a walleye. How you doing, big fella? <laughs> wow. That is a pretty fish. Going in the tank with him for sure. All right, welcome back campside with me. We're gonna do a cook of our walleye and some crappie. And uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because a lot of people ask me about my recipe for beer battered fish. And it's my family's favorite fish that I make. Um, it's the fish that I make when we wanna have crappie sandwiches and on special occasions. And I don't make it all that often because there's a lot of prep work that goes into it and you're gonna see that here in a moment. So um, just so you know, uh, you gotta keep this recipe to yourself. This is a secret recipe, okay? I had a German, old German neighbor lady, okay? Her name was Helga and she gave me this recipe, but she wouldn't give it to me until I would take an old Dutch tin, you know, one of those old tins and flatten it completely out. And I had to etch the recipe left-handed from right to left. So with my opposite hand, the opposite way, okay, this is all a bunch of shit. You're gonna see how easy it is to make this spear battered fish. <laughs> if you stuck around through all that, good for you. Let's get to it. Okay, so I already have a plate with a bunch of uh, paper towels on it to help catch the grease because this is deep fried food, obviously. 
And this is Shore Lunch beer batter. You're gonna have to trust me. I already threw the box away. I poured it in the uh, poured it in the bowl. Sorry, um, but it's Shore Lunch beer batter. Just straight Shore Lunch beer batter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my beer and I'm gonna wait a minute. That's a cream soda. <laughs> I tried to trick you. I'm gonna take my beer and you can take any beer. You can even use Miller High Life. I prefer Green Bell Premium, but this is gonna do, I promise. So you just pour that in there. And as you're pouring it in, you wanna kinda of stir it in with a fork. And it's gonna be really clumpy right away. I do about half the can and then kinda of stir it up. And it's a very windy day outside, so I hope this audio is actually really good for you guys because I want you to learn exactly how to do this. So I add the rest of the beer after I've kind of mixed it in a little bit. And I do a warm beer, um, preferably a flat beer if possible. Um, all you need is the beer flavor. This isn't, uh, for you beer connoisseurs out there that have never done this before, this isn't about having the freshest, best beer ever in your beer batter, and you're allowed to spill, by the way. I'm gonna use a little of this right here to go ahead and whip that up. Ooh, right there, and I get a little trash underneath. So, again, for you beer connoisseurs out there, this isn't about the best beer, this is about the best batter. And the batter is, best when it has that beer flavoring it doesn't need the carbonation it doesn't need to be cold you can probably figure that out by now so i'm gonna mix this all up it's gonna be really lumpy for a while and i'm actually gonna add some water to this a lot of people don't realize that the recipe that they give you in my opinion is a little too thick and you know when you have beer battered anything fish shrimp uh, whatever it is, and you have something that's beer battered and it's too thick, the uh, the batter itself is maybe gooey or the fish kind of is a little bit mushy or gooey and you really kind of wish it was more crispy, the batter. This is gonna be your crispy batter right here because it's gonna be thin. Um, it's gonna be not, not necessarily light, but it's definitely not gonna be, you know, all gooey inside. I'll show you. This takes a good bit of mixing. You wanna get all those lumps that you can get out of there. And there's a few lumps in there. They'll kind of go away as you work through this. As long as you get it mixed nicely, you're gonna be just fine. But that's your consistency right there. That's what you want. Let's get out the fish, shall we? So I have this fish covered and wrapped up in a paper towel for right now. And I'm gonna cover it with this because there's a lot of bugs out here. But, um, the reason for this is to dry the fillets as much as possible. I want this to stick to the fillets. I want this to be the moisture in the fillets so that it sticks really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and start unwrapping these. And again, I have some uh, walleye and I have some crappie. Yeah, there's some crappie right there. Look at that, walleye cheek, throw that in. And here's a piece of walleye. So this is gonna be our first batch that's going to go in there. I'm going to take this and just soak it down into the batter. Now I usually put, you know, three, four pieces like you just saw in there. And I'm going to wait for the oil to heat up. And as soon as it heats up, I'm going to show you how to check that with your batter to make sure that uh, everything's good to go. So one of the ways you can test your oil is with your fork and your batter. You drop a little batter in there See if it rises up. See how that's boiling in there nice. Yeah. Not really seeing a lot of brown around the edges yet right away. So I'm going to give it just a few more minutes. And that's kind of a pro tip there. When you do that, when you drop these in with the fork, you should start seeing some brown almost immediately around the edges. These wasn't immediate, so I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. All right, I think it's about ready for our first piece. We're gonna start with, we're actually gonna start with the walleye cheek. I'm just gonna drop it in there. Look at that, floats right up, nice. Not many people do a cheek. <laughs> All right, so you can see the piece, how it looks there. I'm gonna drip a little of that excess off like that. I'm gonna just lay it in there. And what you're gonna do, you're not just gonna drop it in, you're gonna lay it in and you're gonna kinda hold on to it for a sec with your fork and let it float. And then it's gonna be good to go, okay? This is a key. This is a very 
the, what makes this a difficult fish to make, this beer battered fish, is the amount of attention that you need to give it during the cooking and during the prepping process. So, I mean, it's a big key that you get that done correctly. Here's a big piece of walleye. Watch this one. Oh, I'm gonna have to lay that in there nice and slow. Let it come up. And I don't want it to touch that other piece if possible. See that it touched it, oh my gosh. I gotta try and break those apart. There, you don't want it to touch that other piece if possible. Man, that walleye is gonna be good. So we'll put another piece in there. Again, nice and slow. And you don't wanna add too much fish because you don't want it sticking to each other. Nice and slow, and see that one kind of stuck to that one right there. Break it apart as quickly as you can if that happens. There we go. So again, you're going to be paying close attention to this. You're going to be rolling them around a little bit, making sure that they don't get too brown on one side, and just overall making sure they cook well. When I do the shore lunch, you, you can roll those around and flip them around a little bit, but you don't necessarily need to. When you're doing the beer batter like this, it's, it's really important that you do Like the cheek is doing well. All right, these are looking great. They're getting that nice brown, golden brown color on the outside. And they're gonna feel a little bit firm, okay? And But they soften up after you put them on the plate. You're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start removing them right now. And I'm gonna remove some of the smaller pieces, the crappies. And then I'm just gonna let this piece of walleye cook for just a little bit longer since it's a bigger piece of fish. But as I was telling you before, these little crunchies, I like to take those out, put them right on there. People like those little crunchies. Plus it cleans out the uh, grease as you go. See, looks nice, doesn't it? We're gonna let that walleye cook for just one more minute. Man, that looks good. Another little pro tip. While you're waiting on the other fish, cover with aluminum foil. It will kind of steam your fish in there and it also keeps it nice and warm. Just a nice little tip for you. There we go. What a beautiful walleye filet that is. Definitely. Very nice. So we have finished our beer battered fish and then look how wonderful it looks, you guys. That's the big walleye filet. These are the crappie filets and we got those little, those little nubbins there. And this is the cheek, the walleye cheek. These are so good. Mmm. Very good. Hmm. Sorry for talking with my mouth full, but I want to show you one more thing. Look at that. See how there's no gooey stuff in there? See how beautiful that is? That is why people love my beer battered fish. And you know what? I love it too. <laughs> fish brain shame. Woo, woo, woo. Out.